It's nice to be here. Um, I want to talk to you about three things which are very important to me um, and which I hope will be some way important to you too. And these things are about risk, chance, and going with the flow. And it's the last one of these in particular which I think is absolutely critical about how we learn to go with the flow, how we learn to take a chance, how we just evolve with things that evolve around us. Because so much of our life, we put structures and boundaries on it, but life isn't like that. I'm standing here at a TEDx event, and it's a, you know, I have this over my shoulder, and it's a fabulous, fabulous event. And I may appear calm at the moment, but inside, I am petrified. <laughs> There are shaking legs. If I was holding a piece of paper in my hand, you'd see it jiggling around all over the place. And when I was first asked to do this, it was an absolute no-brainer for me. You know, this is a TEDx event, which I am a huge respect for, and I think it's fabulous. The event is being organized with a group of, by a group of my students, who I think are absolutely amazing. And when they said, Dan, come and talk, I was like, yes, fantastic, why not, brilliant, absolute no-brainer. And then as we get closer and closer and closer to this event, I'm starting to go, ooh and I'm starting to get a little bit nervous, and I'm starting to become a bit more hesitant, and I'm starting to become more fearful, and all these issues about risk, and will I be right, and will I be wrong, and will people like my ideas or not like my ideas, are, are flowing through my mind, and it's an absolute confusing mass for me, because I'm not normally like this. Normally, and my friends and my family will testify, I'm fairly confident, I'm fairly outgoing, I'm a lecturer at a university, I regularly teach to groups of 100, 120, I've travelled halfway around the world by myself, I've bungee jumped, I've scuba dived, I made my own wedding cakes, that was risky. <laughs> <sighs> Pressure. Um, I even made arrangements on a Mother's Day, which didn't include my mother, and that's probably more stupid than anything else. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, well, why am I so fearful of standing up and talking to people about something which I want to talk about, which I do every day? And I think it came back to this idea about, would I be right, would I be wrong, would people like what I've got to say? And all of a sudden, I was kind of back in school. At that moment when the teacher was asking a question, how many people here with their hands on their heart can remember back to their school and college days, and when the teacher asked a question, you put your hand up to answer that question? One, two, three, four. Less than half the audience, I would say, at this point. So why is that? Why, when we were asked a question, why, when we were asked to do something, didn't we immediately jump up and go, me, 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 me? And was it this fear that we have of being wrong? What happens in an educational system where we're scared of giving an answer and just having a go at something? Why is this fear about not being correct? And it holds us back. And all of a sudden, when I was preparing for this, I was back in school. So I went to the default position. I went to the textbook. I went to the case study. I wrote a speech. I wrote a paper. I wrote four pages of it. I'll put it on a blog. I'll give it to the organizers. You can read it at your leisure whenever you want. And the more and more I read this, the more I thought, no, I am pigeonholing myself here. And the more I looked at it, the more I thought, oh my god, I'm not going to remember what happens because things are different. The lights are on. The cameras are on. The audience are here. They laugh. They giggle. They give a round of applause. Sometimes they're completely quiet. Um, this is not like university. Sometimes they're not there at all. But we have some people here, which is great. And it's, this is about real life, that we can plan and we can prepare and we can do everything we can in as structured a way as possible. But until you're actually doing something for real, you have no idea how it's going to work out. So for me, this idea about going with the flow becomes absolutely critical because you know, there's nothing to fear about going with the flow because you don't know what the fear is about. You don't know what's in the unknown, uh, but if you think about it, then maybe you start worrying about it. But if you just go with the flow and you don't know what the unknown is, you can't worry about it because you don't know it's there. I remember back in one of my uh, early school years, and I've got to admit, I, I was not, for somebody who's a tutor at a university, I was not a particularly great student. So there's any students in the room take solace that things get better for you as you kind of get older. But I remember the end of one class, a teacher had us all stand up behind our desks, and we were subjected to this kind of impromptu spelling and maths test. So you stood there rigid behind your chair, and you got fired a question at, and if you got it wrong, you stayed there. And if you got it right, you got to skip out of school, as happy and as free as Larry can be. And I remember staying there time and time and time and time again, watching all my mates disappear out. And eventually, I don't know whether I got something right or whether the tutor was sympathetic, but I kind of finally got to leave, and off we went. And it was that humiliation 
that you kind of suffered from that. The comments from your friends, the kind of the scowling that's your teacher, the teacher saying, no, you're wrong. You haven't done what we wanted you to do. And I vowed when I started teaching that I would never be like that, that I would never try and make this about right and wrong, about structure or non-structured, that there's an opportunity here for people to grow and to experiment. And I had a groundbreaking moment, where I think in my mind it was a groundbreaking moment about four or five years ago. And it was a collision of two things. I know that this event is about serendipity, so maybe this is the, the serendipity link here. I had a, a group of students who entered a national competition, um, which they did really, really well in, but ultimately didn't win. Uh, but the experience they had was fantastic. And at the same time that happened, I had another group of students who didn't follow the tutor-led case study. They didn't follow the case study that we gave them and we wanted them to do, where it was all very structured, very rigorous, very set. And they went out and they found a live case study. They went out and they started working with a real client as part of their PR projects. And as anybody ever knows, that the thing about kind of working with clients, organizations, individuals, is, is the sheer variability that is involved here. You know, we as human beings do not follow a set pattern. We do not follow a set process. And one of the things we're not very good at teaching people is how to deal with change and variability. So these guys took it on, and it was absolutely fantastic. And it was when we were sitting down afterwards and reflecting upon that, and how they dealt with all these things that just happened and occurred, these phone calls that suddenly kind of popped up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and the email that arrived at 7 o'clock in the morning, and the client who wanted something and then all of a sudden didn't want it or had asked for something and then wanted something else instead. And just watching them go through that process, it became very clear to me that we needed to think differently about how we encourage people to go with the flow and think very, very differently. And I don't want this to be a rant about education. Education is fantastic. It's one of the best things you can ever do. And we know that some systems are amazing and some systems are, are great. And we know as well, sometimes the system is completely flawed that we are told to sit and listen, we are told to wait, not to take the initiative. At primary school, when you're told off for using the wrong colour pencil, or as I remember, I got told off because my full stops were too big. Apparently they were more like footballs than full stops. I had this wonderful sentence of narrative and then this kind of large circle that went around here somewhere. Um, in some ways, thank God for Microsoft Word and the kind of formulaic size of a full stop these days. But I wanted people to be able to express themselves. So we started looking at a project which introduced more risk, which introduced more chance, and literally meant that people had to go with the flow to be able to do what we wanted them to do. We didn't follow the set questions, the set case study, which was kind of laid down in black and white. And five years later, four years later, we have 40 clients, 140 students, and I would say a fairly high degree of chaos. There was nothing particularly structured about my life at this point. And there's a huge amount of activity going on, and I sort of look at it all, and I'm going, I'm not absolutely too sure exactly what is going on, but the feedback from the clients is fantastic. They've got young, enthusiastic people who they're engaging with, and they're getting new ideas. The feedback from the students is absolutely amazing. And they have their up days, and they have their down days. There are times when we are high-fiving, and there are times when they're in, office, in my office, and they're absolutely having a run. I've gone from being a teacher to being somebody who encourages and motivates and enthuses. We go from high-fives to handing out tissues. And it's this wonderful variability of the experience that makes it so worthwhile. And as I said a second ago, I don't want this to be a rant about education, but we need to think about how we teach people differently. We need to think about different things that we introduce into our educational systems. The, the standardized tests and the standardized patterns are not necessarily the best way of doing things because life is not standardized. And somehow we need to teach people or at least encourage people or facilitate the way to be able to go with the flow. And when that happens, great things happen. Things change, things develop. People find what they like and what they don't like. I had one student on the module years and years ago who was Ultimate, totally and utterly wanted to work in PR. That's all he wanted to do. And at the end of the module, and at the end of six months of working with a live client, with all the variability that went with that, I said, what's your key learning outcome? And he looked at me and went, Dan, I never, ever, ever want to work in PR. <laughs> and it was an absolute revelation. But that's the opportunity we gave people. And whether he would have had the same revelation had he me just working from a textbook, a case study, a series of exam questions, I very much doubt it. So if we give people that chance, let them express, let them take the risk, learn from the risk, encourage risk, and think about risk and mistakes as a positive learning experience. Mistakes are great. 
That's how we learn. That's how we get better. Look at the post-it note. And we've heard today about different mistakes, but the post-it note is my favorite one, that there's an inventor making glue to kind of come up with the best, strongest super glue he ever could, put the paper on the wall, day later, paper comes off the wall. Goes back, makes up more glue, paper goes back on the wall, paper comes back off the wall, and then he has, ah, we think we might be onto here, and we now have one of the world's biggest, best-selling stationary items. So if we encourage mistakes and look at the positives of risk-taking and look at the positives of mistakes, great things happen, and you never know, one day you might even have a group of students organizing a TEDx event. Thank you very much indeed.